Good day, it's Tony Fortune out from the technology firm. Today we will be covering WGET and good old bandwidth testing. So, why and where? When testing performance, there are many times you need to copy a file from a web server. In previous articles, I've covered iPerf and iPerf3. Those only run in memory. So if you want to test the pipe, that kind of thing, it's great. If you want to test disk, uh, not so much. I mean, there's things you can try to do with it, but that's not really what it's meant for. Sometimes you want to include the web server and disk or storage system. So downloading a file is a great start to measure the performance of web server, storage, and the network path of your computer. So here's Mr. Web Server. There's a whole bunch of jazz, and then there's me. So the file transfer direction is this way, and that's really important with performance testing is that you document if you are doing a read or if you're doing a write because with some systems the performance will differ dramatically. So good old WGET and it's a free app. You can retrieve files over HTTP, HTTPS, FTP and FTPS. In this video I'm only going to cover the bandwidth option under HTTP just to give you the I'm going to say just get you a quick start, get you going, then from there you're good to go. Since it runs through the command line it can be used in cron jobs or batch files. There's the website URL and you can get it over here that's a download site windows binaries are here and the manuals over here i'm going to put all that stuff in the write-up so you can just copy and paste that into your browser so the wget command syntax is pretty simple wget options the url or you can put dash dash help so the options are all this stuff and this is this is just a portion of the help screen there's a lot more to it so as i advise the people all the time when i see these help screens even with t shark that kind of thing pipe this to a file print it off and put it up on your wall and then you can just kind of reference it the first few times get, get, get the hang of it and that sort of thing all right how to download a file so when you want to use wget without any options wget will download the file specified and that's pretty simple right and the way it works is it actually resolves the IP address to the domain name first and that's obviously if you use a domain name if you have just an IP then that's not really going to do too much during the download you see the file name the file size the average download speed and the estimated time to complete the download. Once the download is complete, you'll find the downloaded file in the current working directory. So that's what you see over here. This is resolving the tech firm to the IP, connecting, it's connecting to it, 443 in this case because it's HTTPS, connected, and then it says request sent, so on and so on and so on and so on. Okay, And this is kind of nice because it's just 200 OK rather than a, a redirect or some other kind of code that you may have gotten back. WGET then displays the HTTP response code file size, just as I said, and the average download speed. So by default, if you want to download the same file, WGET will add a sequential number after it. So you can see here it says dot one, and then dot two, and then dot three, and dot four, and dot five. That's the default. So you can always override that if you'd like. Otherwise, you'll end up with a whole bunch of files in that folder that you need to clean out or include as part of your script to clean those files out. If you want to turn off this output, you can use the dash Q flag. Sometimes you want to run the, this little test and you want to measure it from the server's perspective or the network components along the way. So you really don't need to see all this nonsense. You can just do dash lowercase Q. Now, little term, we, uh, I guess, I think we made this up because I can't find reference of this, but we've been talking about this type of network for years. Um, and it's an undocumented network design, I guess, is the best way of saying it. It's called a dumbbell network. And what that means is the link between the networks is slower than the end points. So big, small, big, just like kind of like a dumbbell, if you will, right? And when you think about it, this isn't very uncommon at all, right, to have a data center, um, you know, a fast PC, a gig at a desk, and then maybe in the middle you only have... 100 meg Ethernet, 10 meg, some places 1 meg still, 512k, that sort of thing. So this is a very common design. I, I think it's more common than people think it is. So what I did was I set up my Apposite Link Trophy LAN, WAN, sorry, WAN emulator to simulate a 10 meg link. So I said 10 meg, I put a little delay in there, and I put a 1% packet loss just to kind of make it realistic. So that's kind of where it sits in our diagram right now. The reason why I did that was I wanted to simulate a 10 meg link. So then I created a simple batch file and this batch file is going to limit the download to 1.2 kilobytes or 9.6 megabits and that's what this one does. The one below it is 
simply going to do a download using defaults, so kind of full speed if you will, right? Because think about it, the server's gig, the client's gig, they have no way of figuring out the middle link is 1 meg or 10 meg or 3 meg or 50 meg, whatever it happens to be, right? Now the batch file has a very simple syntax, CLS to clear the screen, if you've never done this before, echo, percent time percent, it's going to display the time, and then wget is going to get the file, echo, end of test, and echo period. And all that does is put a little kind of spacing at the end of the test, so just to kind of make the output look obvious. So this is what the output looks like. And you can see there's our time. Why did I do that? Because now I have a timestamp at the beginning of the test. wget will put a timestamp at the end of the test. So if you want to measure how long it took, you can do that as well. I'm just going to concentrate on the average throughput right now, okay? And this is 1.09 megabytes. That's good to know. As I mentioned earlier, 200 OK. That's good to know. And then so on and so on. So here's our results. Now, this is the default option. So we had, um, in this case, bytes. It's actually megabytes. One all the way down and eight all the way down. You know what I'll do? Here, just so I can remember and I don't mess this up later. There we go. And that's what we have. Then I change the speed of the actual download. So the methodology has always been to test for the slowest link or try to accommodate for the slowest link or you only as fast as your slowest link. All those have been said in the past, right? In this case, 10 meg. So all the math should be around 10 and actually it should be a little less than 10 because of overhead and stuff might be on it, all that kind of stuff. So depending on how the intermediate network devices buffer and other general behavior, oversubscribing the slowest link results in packet loss and lower overall throughput. So things are slower. So to limit the download speed, use the dash dash limit dash rate option. Now you can use it with no suffix, so it's just bytes, K, which is kilobytes, and M, which is megabytes. So these are file sizes, so they're bytes. We measure speed in bits, right? So these are all bytes. So the batch file was modified, and I did 1,200 kilobytes, right? Which is 9.6 megabits. That's what I did. So there we go. So um, I've got the same same dealy here. I'm going to change that, and I'm going to change this. There you go. So throughput megabytes, you can see it was 8.72, 86, and 856. So this one actually performed better than the first test. Now we'll put them side by side, and you can see the default, 87979.8683, and you can see 87 all the way down 87. So not only did you outperform the default values, but this is really important. You can see the default options are less consistent, right? And that means there's some sort of contention, there's some sort of packet loss or buffering or whatever, but at the end you had lower overall throughput, whereas when you keep things properly sized, you have less buffering, less packet size, and more, I'm going to say, consistent results. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.